What's up, dude? Nice to talk to you, Robbie. How are you, man? Hey, you too. I'm good, man. How are you? I'm great, dude. I got to see this movie. It's scary. It's fun. You, I thought you did a really great job, man. And so I actually, we're very close in age. And I remember my introduction to Resident Evil in the 90s. As a game, I was too young to be brave to play it, man. It scared me. Really severely scared me. I want to know, like, did you have a similar experience? Because we kind of grew up in that same era. I was too young to be playing the game and I made the mistake of playing the game. And one of my earliest video game memories is sitting in the basement and the dogs jumping through the window and just scaring the hell out of me. And I think I was like nine at the time. Like it was, it was really dumb, but I grew up playing hockey and video games and both my parents worked. So I probably wasn't as supervised as I should have been. (laughs) Between the dogs. And there was one scene where like one of the monsters comes crashing through a wall. I was just like, I can't, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah, but, it's a uh, lot. It's a lot. Yeah. But, so clearly you're familiar with the games and I really love that. And I think I've heard you talk about it and stuff and it comes through in the film um, and from your costume to your attitude, like you look like Chris, it's really cool to see homages to the game in such an immersive, immersive way. Did you take anything from the games? You said, I want to do this. Or was like there any direction that you got that was like, Hey, you know, we want to kind of do it this way, but also make something new here. Well, I felt, I felt really good just about the amount of hours I've played as Chris Redfield and and spent in the Resident Evil world. And then I met with Johannes and it was obvious that he was a huge fan and super passionate about adapting Resident Evil 1 and 2. And uh, uh, I just felt very confident in the version that he put on the page. And, you know, what I thought he did so well was he took these characters that are, uh, you know, a little bit one dimensional in in the video games and, and, you know, fleshed them out and made them more human and and gave them flaws and built their relationships and and really made it so you actually care about these people because at the end of the day if you don't care about these characters it doesn't matter how much it looks like a cutscene from the movie you're going to lose the audience so i i just felt really good about you know as an actor playing the version of chris that you know it has some regrets and 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 you know you know has some 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 flaws and and probably should have moved out of the city, but can't bring himself to do it. And then getting to kill a bunch of zombies as, you know, that Chris Redfield, I knew that was coming. So it was, it was pretty cool. I love how the movies like movies like this and other zombie movies never call zombie zombies. Did you guys have a name for like the infected people on the set? Oh man. I don't think so. I think we just called them zombies, but, but I, I could be wrong. We were shooting during COVID. So like protocols were very weird. So like nobody, nobody cared if you were a zombie or a, an actor or what it was just like, everybody had to be in their certain bubbles. And like, it was more about, you know, containing a real virus, not the T virus. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And I'm not going to spoil anything from the film, but there are definitely, seeds planted this is one of those movies you got to stay all the way through to the end about what could be coming if we do get a sequel down the road when you signed on for the film to play chris obviously their story laid out in in games and books did they give you just one movie or was this kind of like a well here's the first movie we do have ideas here's the overarching possibility of what could come next uh when when you were discussing the film at at, like your first conversations um it is it was currently or it was built as a a single movie. But with that being said, I mean, the only thing that matters is if the movie does well. So if the movie does well, I think they'll want a sequel. I know. I mean, you know, the story ends with a sequel, you know, being teed up. I know that uh, Johannes has talked about Code Veronica and Resident Evil 4 as things that he would want to adapt. And I would love to continue playing Chris. This was a dream come true for me. Dude, I'm happy to see you succeed and get another franchise uh, right here. And I'm, I'm excited. I hope it gets to continue. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm a huge comic book fan. It's no secret. You look around my room here. I loved you as Firestorm as well. And we're on the precipice Thanks. of like the DC world going into multiverse stuff. Do you think those comic book days are totally behind you? Do you think there's any chance like, I mean, Michael Keaton's back. So I feel like anything's possible, but it's the obligatory question of, will you ever do it again? Have you, do you like text them and say like, Hey, you know, you got anything for me? Can we do this again or anything like that? You know, that? You're, you're never really dead in that universe. So uh, I would love to go back. I'm, I'm currently shooting a, a movie in Toronto right now. So a lot of it is just kind of schedule based. And I've got a two-year-old son now. So it's one of those things of just balancing life 
and work, but uh, I love everyone over there. I think they're in their final season of season eight or, or close to it or, you know, something like that. But, uh, you know, I, I love everyone over there. I stay in touch with them. Danielle is, is amazing. She has a son who's, who's just a little bit younger than mine. And, uh, I would love to go back. So we'll see. I love it. And if that doesn't ever happen, I think Nova would be a good fit for you too, man, but it's a pleasure to speak with oh, you. Cool. Yeah. Thank Resident you. Evil, man. Congrats on the film, dude. You're, you were great in it. And, uh, thank you so much for talking, dude. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Brandon. Good to see you.